to quiet ourselves as we now prepare for our worship. Visiting with us and presiding this morning is Father Bill, assisted by our own Deacon Sonny. And with all of that, let's stand and begin our celebration. Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And as we come together this morning, as uh, the beginning of uh, the time of ordinary time, we ask the Lord to forgive us our sins as we acknowledge our failings. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are Lord, you alone are most high, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, 
mercifully hear the pleading of your people and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord said to me, you are my servant, Israel, through whom I show my glory. Now the Lord has spoken who formed me as his servant from the womb, that Jacob may be brought back to him and Israel gathered to him. I am made glorious in the sight of the Lord and my God is now my strength. It is too little, the Lord says, for you to be my servant, to raise up the tribes of Jacob and restore the survivors of Israel. I will make you a light to the nations that my salvation may reach to the ends of the earth. The word of the Lord. from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Sothenes, our brother, to the church of God that is in Corinth, to you who have been sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be holy, with all those everywhere who will call upon the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. The word of the Lord. Oh, 
him he gave power to become children of God. reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. John the baptizer saw Jesus coming toward him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. He is the one of whom I said, A man is coming after me who ranks ahead of me because he existed before me. I did not know him. But the reason why I came baptizing with water was that he might be made known to Israel. John testified further, saying, I saw the Spirit come down like a dove from heaven and remain on him. I did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptize with water told me, On whomever you see the Spirit come down and remain, he is the one who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. Now I have seen and testified that he is the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. As we mentioned in the beginning of the liturgy, we now have uh, entered into the period of time in the church year we refer to as ordinary time. But I'd like to say a few words about that before looking for a moment at the gospel today. When we use the word ordinary, we often use it as a synonym for common or humdrum, or it gives the idea of nothing special. As one person said to me, it sounds like liturgical downtime. And that's something we have to address as we start this time of the year, because actually it's quite the opposite. Now, as we look at ordinary time in the church year, the first thing we recognize is that it is a time that we don't speak of as a season. The seasons of the year, Advent, Christmas, Easter, at Lent and Easter, are times when we celebrate the great mysteries of our faith. We have just, through Advent and Christmas, focused on the great mystery of the Incarnation. And in a few weeks, actually, we'll beginning, uh, we will be beginning the season of Lent, and Lent and Easter, we focus on the Paschal mystery. We speak of Jesus' suffering, death, and resurrection. And so in those times when we put such intense focus, and then we move into ordinary time, it is quite possible for us to go back to saying, well, downtime. We're waiting for the next season. We're just passing through. But as I say, we have to look at it differently. The word itself, actually what it translates, sounds uh, strange, is time through the year, which was translated, that's the Latin, translated ordinary. Ordinary coming from a word ordinalis, that is numbered or ordered. And in fact, the root of the word is order. We use the term because during this period of the year, which is broken up, the first part of it we enter now, broken up between the end of Christmas, the beginning of Lent, and then we pick up at the end of Easter, moving to the beginning of next Advent, is a time when we follow, we follow in order the ministry of Jesus. We begin today, we hear the story beginning with 
John the Baptist. And what we're meant to do during this period of time is recognize that as we follow Jesus through the ministry, as we listen to what he says, as we focus on what he did, the effect of his word, of his action, on those who saw him, we open ourselves, we travel with him, so to speak, so that just as the people who met him during his ministry in Galilee and then in Jerusalem were touched, challenged, impacted by his word, we travel along, not as just observers, but we travel along listening and focusing so that as we follow the ministry of Jesus, we might indeed be challenged. We might indeed be impacted. It is a time when during the year, the first thing you notice about ordinary time is green, right? right? You come in today and everything is green. Why? Why is it green? We ran out of colors. You know, <laughs> we got a big sale on green. No, the traditionally green is used as a sign of hope. But also, when you see something green, especially when you're out there today in the cold and all the trees are bare, when you see green, what do you think of? Growth, right? You think of new life. And that is the way we should, as we look at the green, think of why it is associated with ordinary time. As we, during the year, follow with Jesus, Follow along and listen. We pray that we might mature, that we might grow, that we might come to a new life as we follow along. So as we enter ordinary time, it's not downtime. It's not, not special time. It's in fact, perhaps, an even more special time. Why? Because, as I say, we follow Jesus and we can focus on him. And let's be honest, so often, especially as we went through Advent and Christmas, so many things there we, used to, we say over and again, distract us, right? We're distracted by all kinds of preparation, all kinds of celebration. And the same can happen to a lesser extent as we move later on. In Lent, in Easter, so many things that we focus on and we can be distracted by. But now, without the distractions, in a sense with a quiet period, we're challenged to follow. And so the first thing is, as we enter this period of time, let us pray for the grace to follow. Let us look at this year as a journey, as a journey. If we allow the Spirit to guide us, can find ourselves as we focus on the words, the actions of Christ, we can find ourselves truly moved and we might grow as his disciples. Now, as I said, we follow from the beginning. And so once again, we come to the figure of John the Baptist. Really, only about a month ago, right? In Advent, John the Baptist was the focus of the gospel. Now, during Advent, when we're focusing on the, gospel, the, the preaching of John, our texts are taken from the Gospels of Mark, of Luke, and of course this past year, Matthew. Now, what was presented to us? The picture of John was one of a prophet who went out to the desert, recall, and called the people to repent, to change. We heard the focus on his baptism, the water right by which the repentance, the turn of heart was marked, the call, the challenge to put into practice what we say we believe. The focus was on a call to repentance in the light of the one who was to come. And that was the focus of the ministry, a ministry of repentance, a ministry of baptism, of looking ahead and preparing for the time of God's action, the coming of, as we heard earlier, the kingdom. But in John's gospel, the gospel we read today, the portrait of John the Baptist is different. While there is a mention of his baptizing and of his preparation for the one who was to come, the focus, the, 
on John in this fourth gospel is witness. John, from the very beginning, is presented as a witness to the light. He is not the light. He is the one who has come to point out, as he says to Israel, the one who is to come. And in the gospel today, we have really, if your mind enter the mind of the, of the, the story, or the picture of the story, put it in your mind, I've always pre- seen John as standing there, pointing, right? He points, look, behold, there he is. Behold, there he is. When he came, as he says, to recognize him, I did not know him. He says it twice. But what was revealed to me, and when I saw it, I recognized him. Now, when John recognizes the Lord, he gives witness to him. He points him out. He points him out. And that, as we begin, first he points us to him. But we also recognize that John is a model for us. As John gives witness to us, we are to give witness to others. We are to point to others. I remember when I was first ordained many, many years ago. The, at that time, it was more fashionable. People would say, you have to bring Jesus to people. Have you ever heard that? Yeah, you have to bring Jesus to people? A friend of mine wrote an article and he said, nope, you don't bring Jesus to people. Jesus is there. You point him out. There's a difference. You don't have to worry about bringing him. The Lord is there. Ministry, discipleship, witnessing is about calling attention to his presence, about pointing him out. And I've always remembered that. I've always remembered that. That's the task, to point him out, to call attention to the Lord's presence, to help people to see, to recognize, first recognizing it in my own life, Because if I don't recognize the Lord's presence, the Lord's action in my own life, what kind of a witness can I give to others? It's just words. We have to pray and open ourselves so that the Lord, we might become more aware. It's not like, Lord, come to me. Lord, come to me. Lord, I'm looking up. Lord, come to me. I'm looking in the wrong spot. I'm here. It's like he's tapping me on the shoulder. Over here. I'm here. Look. Look. Look at what the Lord, how he is present in my life. Recognize him. Behold, I am with you. Remember those words from Advent? He is with with us. We learn how he is with us. How he seeks to heal us. How he is present with us. How he strengthens us. How he forgives us. How when we have no strength to go on, he lifts us. When we have no hope, he touches us and guides us and picks us up. Then, when we allow ourselves to be touched by the Lord, we can help others. We can give witness to him as John gives witness to us. That the one we seek the one for whom our heart longs. He is the one, and he is with us. My favorite passage in John's Gospel about the Baptist is actually what begins next. Do you know what the first words of Jesus are in John's Gospel? There's a lot of focus given to the last words of Jesus, the final words of Jesus. I like to think about what's the first thing we hear? And in John's Gospel, we hear that the next day now, after what we hear today, John is again with his disciples, Andrew and one who is unnamed, who is probably the beloved disciple later on. And he says once again, look, behold the Lamb of God. Andrew and the other disciple, they go. They follow Jesus for a bit. And then Jesus turns around and looks at them. Picture the scene, can't you? They're following him, and he turns. And he says to them, 
what? What are you looking for? A question which on one hand, well, what are you guys looking for? Can I help you? But of course, a much deeper question. One of those questions that we find in John directed to people in the, in the page, but directed to the person reading the page. The first words of Jesus in the gospel to them and to us is, what are you looking for? And then he says, come and see. Believe, you will find it. And so today, we begin. What are you looking for? What am I looking for? Come, see. If you trust, if I trust, I will find it. And when I find it, when I'm touched by it, then, then, like the Baptist, I will be able in this world to say, look, behold, the one you seek, the Lamb of God. Let us together profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God and true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and, and the, the life, life of, of the, the world, world to come. come. Amen. Let us pray now for all who are most in need of Christ's, uh, of, <clears throat> of Christ's aid in our neighborhood and throughout the world. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For all those with whom we share Christian faith and baptism, that we may work in harmony and fulfill our church's mission from Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for all who suffer unjust imprisonment, torture, and denial of their rights, especially the right to worship freely, and that God may bring swift justice, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, that the legacy of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. may live and flourish, and that all racial discrimination and suspicion may cease, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the sick, especially Marie D'Elia, Tecla Amato, Leroy Amato, Josephine Trapani. That they may be returned to good health, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all the faithful departed, that they may rest in peace and rise in glory, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our prayer intentions book. And the prayers that we keep in our hearts. And for Erica Petzold and Alice Walsh, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, those who suffer are closest to your heart. We pray that you will bring swift healing and justice to all who are in need of your care. You live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
Let's sing number 43 in the supplement, number 43. Sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries, for whenever the memorial of his sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty, our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering cancel out our sins. 
By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. to our Father in heaven, as Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. Only say the word, my soul shall be healed. Communion song is number 21 in the supplement, number 21.
O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread one in mind and in heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bunch of announcements this morning. Members of the Columbiettes will be selling tickets for the Snowflake Dinner Dance over here on the wing after Mass. Tickets may also be purchased at the rectory during normal business hours. Members from our St. Vincent de Paul Society are available after Mass to collect any donations that you might have for the poor and needy of our community. The Parish Family Ministry is sponsoring a Mardi Gras-inspired family bingo on Saturday, February 18th at 7 p.m. Reservations must be made in advance, so see other details in the bulletin. Curtain Up Entertainment is holding auditions on Friday, January 27th at 7.30 for a production of Godspell to be performed right here at St. Francis in April. So find further details in the bulletin. And also there's a new release on Formed that challenges us to love and support life. The program is called Into Life, Love Changes Everything from the Sisters of Life. It's a 12-part series. Please see our website under Formed for the link. 
If you need to register, follow the instructions on our parish website to open the beautiful and wonderful programs in your home or prayer group. And as always, speaking of the bulletin, make sure you take home the bulletin today when you leave Mass. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless all of you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. Send me his number 85 in the supplement, number 85. Wherever your spirit may be, say.